All right, welcome back. In the uh, last video here at Lag Demon Programming in our compiler design course, uh, we uh, got the types set up and uh, we started on our AST here. So we've got our uh, types defined and, and our uh, <clears throat> ability to print those out or make them into something. And we're going to be working our way up uh, this uh, parse process from the bottom up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next thing we want to be concerned about is this identifier, typed identifier. Well, we don't really need to, we need to distinguish them here for some reasons, uh, the way the compiler works, but we don't need to distinguish them in the abstract syntax tree. So all we really need is an identifier. So let's create a class. We'll call it identifier. And we'll make it public. And it's FNG node. And then we want a protected section. So what does it need? Well, based on our uh, parser here, uh, typed identifier has an identifier and a type. And we know what a type is, and we know what the identifier is. It's this ident. Um, and we'll come to this in a moment. We're going to do this one first, and then we'll show how we're going to process this. And we need to create those uh, types for those once we get this in here. And we'll also show how we're going to print it out. So we need a, a string that's going to be the identifier. That's the name. And then we need uh, that type. So types underscore type. And then here in public, we're going to do identifier. And it's going to take a uh, standard string as the ident and types as the type. And then we'll just initialize those underscore ident, ident, underscore type, type, type. And there's our constructor. Now we want to be able to get the type and uh, set the type and get the ident and so forth. And we need our visitor and we need our output. And I'm going to change the way this output works a little bit here. <clears throat> I'm going to paste these in. So just getters and setters, get ident, returns the ident, get the type, returns the type. And then we have the ability to set the type. Uh, because it might be infer and we need to set it to an actual type once we figure that out with our visitor. One of our visitors uh, will figure that out. Uh, for the output, I'm going to change this a little bit. What I'm going to do for a typed ident is I'm going to print it out like this with the ident with a colon. Let's put spaces around it. Oops, we need a these and then we're going to go type to string underscore type and so that'll print out any identifier that we run into and what its type is uh, when we get it uh, and that's complete that's an identifier so let's go over here to our parser and we've got two identifier and typed identifier so up here in this, we're going to create identifier. Oops, it's got to be, darn it. <laughs> Capital I, identifier. It's going to be a pointer to an identifier. And it's going to be called identifier. And now down under here, we're going to go percent 
type. And this is how we apply types to non-terminals. And this is going to be a type identifier. And it's going to be identifier and typed identifier. They're both going to be of type identifier. So now this one here is an easy one for its production. We can go out here and go that dollar sign dollar sign equals new identifier and we want to go dollar sign two is a pointer to a string because it's an ident and it's going to be bringing back uh, well no this identifier yeah this identifier let's do this one first let me see how I did this in my notes Take a quick peek. Oh, that's right. So yeah, we do want to do this. We don't want to do this yet. I'm going to do this one first. And it's just going to be this. Uh, dollar sign, dollar sign equals new identifier. And we're going to pass in standard string dollar sign one that way we turn that identifier standard string dollar sign one and then a comma and we're going to go types colon colon infer Oops. It's here. And then for this one, <clears throat> it's even simpler. Uh, dollar sign two is an identifier that was already grabbed here and created. So all we have to do here is go dollar sign two. Set type to dollar sign four. And then dollar sign dollar sign equals dollar sign two. And I believe that will work. Be in the right directory. We got an error. Standard string. There's no member named set type. Identifier and typed identifier. Identifier pointer is a typed identifier. And then here under typed identifier, I have typed identifier and identifier. Okay. Well, I called it identifier. Identifier, identifier, typed identifier. For some reason it thinks that identifier is a string, but it's not. It's a new identifier. This seems to work.
I didn't. Oh. I think what we didn't do. Ah, uh, come on, getting a little sticky here. Is I didn't. Is a symbol, which is a chair pointer. That's what it should be. <clears throat> so I didn't is correct. Identifier pointer, identifier. I'm going to put this directly in line with my notes. I'm going to change this to typed identifier just so that I know. I'm going to change this to typed identifier. Identifier and typed identifier are both of that type. And that's what I have here. Ident is a type symbol. Same thing. Typed identifier. So sometimes these things can be fun to uh, track down. This is dollar sign one, dollar sign two, dollar sign three, dollar sign four. Dollar sign two pointer set type dollar sign four. That should be fine. I don't get it. Oh, and now it works. Okay, let's run it. <laughs> and what we want to do here, when we get this... Uh, okay, we go up here to the top. And I put that in the debug thing. I did not. All right. So I'm going to put a little define up here to make this a little bit easier. It's just a debug define. Does a C out and a flush. It doesn't include a carriage return or anything. End of line. We'll do that in here. And we'll go... Uh, <clears throat> actually, we'll do that in our AST, I think. Let's go check that. Uh, and I want to put a... Uh, standard endl there. Okay, so then we can just go here and we can go debug we need a dereference dollar sign dollar sign because it's a pointer. And so we got a whole bunch of <clears throat> Let's go to our AST file. What did I do wrong? <clears throat> oh, yeah. <clears throat> Thought it looked funny. We need a parentheses in there. So, here in our test file, it found all the identifiers and decided that they were all in fur. Interesting. They should have types associated with them. Oh, because I only did this one. Uh, yeah. So we got to put that same thing up here. Uh, darn it. Sometimes I type just a little too fast for myself. So what do we have? Infer unit infer infer we got a string so it's finding some of those types and a whole bunch of them are set up as infer <clears throat> so it is building when it's finding them it's building these two constructs so 
me check the time here. Uh, did I start my timer? I did not. I'm going to pause the video for a second and check the time. All right, it's uh, about 15 minutes in, so we're okay. So let's move uh, move up the scale here and look at the next one. So here in parameter and parameter list what we need to do is just create first of all a parameter list uh, and, a, and a parameter class uh, to be able to store uh, what what a parameter is now the difference of course between a parameter and an argument a parameter will always be a symbol that will always be some kind of name <clears throat> but it won't be filled in until you call it. it won't be given a value until you call that function the parameter is a placeholder we used to call them years ago dummy parameters uh, the idea is that they're placeholders within the function that says that there's some value going to be passed in and we're going to make this value within this function become that value for the parameter that came in so dummy parameters are parameters are placeholders and they're always names so in actuality a parameter is just a kind of typed identifier uh, it might be typed or it might be just an identifier that needs to be inferred <clears throat> that's okay uh, we can we can collect that as a typed identifier but we need to cast it to a parameter and uh, and so that means that parameter is kind of a uh, a holder piece so we've got identifier and parameter is a very simple class here it's just based on identifier we'll go over here and right below identifier we'll put this in and I'll explain it so a parameter class is just a type of identifier uh, and it takes a string and a type and so forth uh, if you want to build one directly but actually we're just going to cast our uh, our identifiers into parameters when they fall into that category that'll simplify things so let's go back to our parser and go up here one sec and here's a parameter list and a parameter let me grab these right here under identifier we'll have our parameters and then <clears throat> we have a uh, param list and a param to type and so right here under underneath identifier we'll put in these parameters so this is just typing the two non-terminals as a parameter and a parameter list a parameter is our new class we just created and a parameter list is this type def that we did and I'll show you that to you I didn't explain that I just made a type def of a standard vector of parameter pointers and called it a parameter list um, and then for a parameter uh, it's really simple for a parameter list we'll do the parameter list first back here back down to parameter list uh, two bits of code here let me do it this way uh. so for a parameter what we're gonna do is set dollar sign dollar sign is a new parameter list 
and we're going to push back dollar sign one as the first parameter in the list and then as they accumulate all we have to do is this move the parameter list back to the parameter and do dollar sign dollar sign push back dollar sign two which is the parameter so that'll accumulate a parameter list let's put a little debug statement on parameter and make this pointer oh no I didn't want to do that apparently I didn't completely hit the copy pointer dollar sign And what we can do then also is in our AST, we could override, well, we probably should override these. Uh, it's picking it up from there, and that's okay. We should probably override this out function. And we'll call this, uh, we'll just put here param so we can see the difference. And did we get, it's not showing any params. Do I have any in here? Uh, oh, well, it's not finding any params because it's not pattern matching with that yet. <clears throat> Parameters are used. Yeah, we won't see those yet until we get to all the way up here to a let a let statement. This is where parameter list comes into play, uh, and we're not parsing that yet. Well, we're not spitting anything out here yet. So, while it's finding them, uh, that's a parameter list. Should find them and build a parameter list. Let's try this and make this pointer dollar sign two. I'm not seeing it's picking any up yet, but I think it's because it's not seeing it yet. We're not far enough along. But we'll see all these pop up as we produce stuff. Uh, well, I didn't create a parameter. That's part of the problem. We've got a parameter list. I didn't create a parameter yet. So let's go down here. This will probably work. Now, what we can do is, darn it. these two over here ah that didn't work out the way I wanted it to <laughs> well we'll just do that and we'll grab this one <clears throat> see if we uh Get a printout of parameters now. Nope, not yet. Yeah, it's not flowing up yet. All right. Expressions are a little more tricky. We have uh, two types. We have binary and unary expressions in here. Uh, so we have to create those. Uh, I'm not sure what the time is because I didn't set my timer. Uh, but I think it's probably getting pretty close. Let me take a look.
Yeah, we're 25 minutes into this video. So yeah, it takes a little bit of time to piece these things together, even with copy pasting. We'd be an hour long if I had had to handwrite all of that uh, while we were talking about it. So I hope you're uh, enjoying the video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.